What's happening, everybody? It is Wednesday night, special edition of Thrifty Business with JNA. I'm your one host, Vegas J. Hi, Billy and A. We are coming to you live from the Jackalope Studios. Just been uh, our, our studios just been christened thanks to uh, one of our guests behind me, Dave. We have a full live studio audience here today. Woo! Look at that! I have never had so many people in my office in my life. <laughs> Do you ever get the feeling you're being stared at? <laughs> What's happening tonight, Nadine? Not much. Is everybody there? We are good. How's your weather there? Freezing. Yeah, Windy I won't, and cold. I, I won't tell you that we have the air conditioning on here. Oh, did I just say that? <laughs> I want to hear it. <laughs> tired of winter. Yeah, well, that's why we left. We got tired of it, too. All right, let's get. Uh, let's jump it right off. And it's time for... And it's time for... Oh, my gosh, what is happening? <laughs> there we go. Mm, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for Jay's Tiki Talk, where I share a, a tiki mug and some rum with you. Tonight's a special occasion because we do have a full house of people, and we are all drinking Bugalicious. Now, Bugalicious is the home drink uh, that I created for our bar. <clears throat> it's rum and other yummy goodies, and this one is based uh, with a coconut rum. I use Kahunaville coconut rum. Oh, everybody's cheers on each other. And tonight, I'm drinking out of my own glass. The Den of Sin is the name of our home tiki bar. So not a mug tonight. It is the Den of Sin. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. And I see Nadine's got a sippy cup. Let's see which one mm -hmm. she's got tonight. It's Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. <laughs> All right, so yeah, tonight not just a straight up rum. It is one of the house cocktails. We have two. I've, I've uh, had a bar for 15 years. I've created two whole cocktails. So I'm slow at it, but they're good. When you get here and you have one, you'll like them. That's for sure. You've had a Pugalicious, right, Nadine? No. You never have? At, no. <laughs> I didn't make them at the party you were at for eBay Radio? Not for me. You just sat in the chair and didn't drink? With the... I guess so. I never... <laughs> Not for you. What, I, just, I just skipped you? I guess so. <laughs> All right. Well, sorry I brought that up. I missed that. <laughs> All righty then. Let's get to it. It is time. For Nave's breast cancer update and fact of the week. Okay. So it's been a, another rough week as normal, it seems. I went to the oncologist yesterday having symptoms have to do some scans and tests today I went to three appointments not one but not two but three and I had physical therapy and surgeon and um, my surgeon I have to have surgery I'm supposed to have surgery on the 29th of this month but it might be moved up to the 22nd I have a large hole in my upper rib cage that needs to be repaired I have a an artery that's under it that could rupture so that's my latest complication and if it I don't think it's gonna rupture I think the doctor has to tell me the worst case scenario but um, I just have to be really careful lifting restrictions have to keep it covered that kind of thing until I can get the surgery so that's my latest fun and my my um, fact of the week is that the most common type of breast cancer, which uh, a com it's 70% of all breast cancers, originates in the ducts, and it's known as ductal carcinoma. That's the kind that I scored, but um, mine has a um, a kind of unique subtype to it because there's the there's actually several types of breast cancer. There's not just one type. I don't know um, for those of you who don't know that out there, but it's um, there's um, medullary carcinoma, there's Paget's disease, there's tubular carcinoma, there's inflammatory, there's phyloids, there's all different types. So I scored ductal invasive ductal carcinoma, and my subtype is very hormonally positive. So. Uh, there's, but then there's different subtypes. So anyway, just so that you all know, there are several types of breast cancer out there. So yes, that's it. Well, I'm sending, I'm sending you a big hug as always. Thank I wish you. I was closer to give you a real one, but this is the best I got right now. Thank hug, you. hug, hug. Oh, big hug. Hugs from the whole. Oh, oh thank you. Got a whole yeah, it's been a rough. It's been a rough week, but I'm hanging in there. You've got an office hug. I've never had an office hug before. <laughs> all right, let's get to. Come on. 
the score wars of the week. Oh, no, not the buzzer. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, we got we both got some good scores this week. I am very excited to uh, to share our scores because I liked yours, I liked mine. It was a good week. So, let's get right to uh, let's get right to yours. How's that sound? Sure. <laughs> Oh, that's not a score. That's a dud. Oops. Sorry. The wrong. Hey, how about those? Are those a score? Oh, that's a score. So I bought these uh, when I was thrifting with Jason and our friend Pam McAllister in New Jersey um, at the beginning of February during my fundraiser time. And I bought those for $14.99 at, the, at a Goodwill. And I knew they were going to, they were just like brand new. They're dance go clogs. They were in a smaller size. It's a, it was a women's uh, 36, which translates to a U.S. approximate six. So they were smaller size, but they were in almost brand new condition. So I knew they were going to sell well. And just this morning, someone, I had $79.99 free shipping with best offer. And someone didn't make me an offer. They just paid the full $79.99. So I was happy with that sale. Yeah, I would be happy with that sale, too. Nice. All right, your next one. Uh, there we go. Okay, this was, I had, I had this up, actually, I priced it too high. This was one that, I guess when I was pricing it, that particular kit was going higher, but I got an offer for I think they offered, they started at 25. We got it, we went up to 33 and I took, I accepted the 33 because I looked it up again and the price has gone down on that kit. So the average was selling for around 35. So always check your price on your items to make sure that if you listed something a while ago, it's still current because, you know, sometimes the market shifts a little bit. So this sold for $33. Good bonus for that, I was happy with that because I probably only paid, um, I don't remember exactly what I paid, but I know I probably paid a couple dollars for it. So. And something easy to ship, you know, just yeah, slide exactly. right in an it's envelope. First class, so that was, I wasn't, I wasn't unhappy with $33 for that, knowing that the, the market price went down. So. And then you have a skirt. Yeah, no, this was a score. It's only it was only at nineteen ninety nine, but I remember particularly I found this by the pound in the big dirty bins. <laughs> And <laughs> stations behind me going. Ugh. <laughs> so it was, it was, it was just cents on the dollar. I mean, this, the, the, uh, this outlet store that I went to was, um, it's a church outlet store, very similar to a Goodwill outlet. It's the same, same exact thing, but they were, they're a little cheaper than the Goodwill outlet. So I hardly paid anything for this skirt, and it was a really thick corduroy. It weighed a pound and a half just the skirt alone, and it went to a buyer in Germany, so I got the full $19.99 that I paid cents for, and it shipped to Germany, and they paid more than the skirt to ship it. They paid $22 in shipping, because it was, the skirt alone was so heavy, so. And uh, Debbie uh, mentioned something while you were showing the skirt. She said... That's a beautiful photograph. That's a beautiful photograph. Oh, thank you very much. Good job. All right. Let's go from uh, frilly little girly skirts to manly basketball jerseys. Yes, I sell girly <laughs> things. So I, uh, pie in the sky, I had this vintage Joe Dumars Detroit Pistons jersey for 400 bucks, and a guy said, what's the lo least you'll take? And I've had it listed since August. And I said, 200 bucks, and it's yours. And he made me an offer of 200 bucks, and I sold it. So <laughs> That's awesome. That was a good sell. Very happy. Hey, Nate, <laughs> Nate easy on your desk there. And then uh, to go uh, uh, 180 degrees the other way, I also sold this Adobe Creative Suite 5.5 Premium Upgrade for Mac. And uh, this was on my desk for eight months. I kept forgetting to list it. I paid $5, and I accept, accepted a best offer of 400 bucks. So, so I am a graphic designer by trade. That's my... Uh, for those of you who don't know, and that I use the CS Suite, but that's an older version, so... I know, so mm -hmm. don't... Don't front on old versions. People pay you 400 for them. Yeah. And now we have the cloud version, which is just basically, uh, you know, a, a, an upload that you kind of, it's like a 
a virtual share kind of thing. So they're they're going a different direction in their software. They're not doing the old school disks anymore. So maybe somebody just wanted that. I don't know. <laughs> somebody says how many times you leave four hundred dollars laying on your desk. Well, I did for eight months. <laughs> and then my last uh, my last uh, score. You know, we talk about I talk about CDs all the time. I talk about it in my group, the Thrifting Board. I talk about it on my Periscope, so you can find me at Tiki Pug. Uh, but I am not afraid to spend money to make money. This CD cost me thirty-five dollars, and I sold it for seventy-five bucks. Oh, that's good. And it sold within like two weeks of being listed. So uh, again, pie in the sky, ninety bucks was a little high. Somebody offered me seventy-five. I took it, and I was very happy. So we're gonna we're gonna get you uh, doing CDs. <sighs> I, I don't do well. <laughs> you, saw, you saw how well I did with my last attempt. I see you just shiver. So yeah, we'll, we'll yeah, get you. Yeah, so CDs and records are yeah. I'm still. Yeah. I'll get you there. That's my non-comfort zone. All right. First, we had our scores. And now it's time for the duds of the week. All right, I'll uh, jump it off here. My dud, uh, I am pretty much calling it. Jimmy Buffett t-shirts are done. I am calling it. Today, March 3rd, 2016, you can ignore Jimmy Buffett t-shirts. They just don't sell anymore. So this one, even though it was a small, I've had listed for maybe two years. <laughs> I hate I was... to say this, but until Jimmy passes away, it'll be... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he's well preserved with all the rum he's drank, so he ain't going nowhere. <laughs> but uh, this, I took, I was happy to take ten bucks and get it out of here, and I, I've noticed that more and more. So I'll still buy the button downs, but for the most part, the shirts to me are very dead. <laughs> Boo! Hope that's yours. What the hell? Oh, there's mine. That are separated. I bought this on the show. It was just a rocks class, Billy Bob's uh, double rocks class. I don't know. I thought it'd be something good. I was happy to sell it for twelve bucks with free shipping yesterday. So, bye bye, Billy Bob's. I will never buy your rocks glasses again. Speaking of glassware, oh yes, that was a big dud. And I, the worst part is I have like five more of these. Oh. Yeah, that's yeah. So it took me. Oh my gosh, this has been up for so long. I don't even remember when I listed it. It's been like at least, it's been over a year. And it finally just, I just sold the first one for $14.99 with free shipping. It went FOMO, so it was $5.90. And I didn't make very much, obviously. And like I said, I have five more. They may be getting donated. Well, hey, how about putting the four together? Because you know, I see that's some... probably a good idea, actually. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be better with your last four that way. Hey, You're before probably we probably get... right. You know, I figured maybe somebody had this set, this particular design, and they were just looking for one replacement that broke. But yeah. Uh, Robin uh, Vergeson has a good a challenge for us. Jason yeah. does kids' clothes, and Nadine does CDs. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a switch. All right, and then you oh also God. had this sweater, which yeah. I thought... Yeah, well, Narciso Rodriguez, that's a that's actually a... That's kind of, it's a polo brand, and I, I saw this sweater. I I think I paid $4.99 for it. That's what my sweaters are at my Goodwill, and it was an extra small, which was kind of, you know, but there's extra small shoppers out there, and that's been in my store for... A long time as well. I mean, it's gone through, I think, two winters. So. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, so I really had to dig for that one, too. It was uh, well buried. It was, but twenty four ninety five free shipping. It's a dud because it was, it was, it took so long, but it wasn't a horrible sale. No. Padded fl flat rate, you know. Compared to my duds, your 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 <laughs> duds, uh, your duds are right. <laughs> Yeah, usually right. that brand sells better. I don't know what it was about that particular sweater. Uh, we've done our duds. We've done our scores. And now it is time. For Close Encounters of the Thrifty Kind, Kind, Kind. And I have a special guest. 
the, the Thrifty Encounter happened next to me, but it wasn't to me. So I'm bringing on a special guest for the Thrifty Encounter. It is Robin. All right, so you just stay there. We're going to put the mic right here. Ooh, yay. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, well, hang on. Robin. So we were uh, thrifting, and although Robin and I have been friends for a while, she's actually staying in my house this week. She's watched my TV show. She's followed me. She had never scanned a CD in her life. Like, she had to download the app while we're standing there. I'm like, don't you listen to me. That, that's, I'm, 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 I'm in the same position. Yeah, yeah. So, so I started... We started scanning, and I wanted to show her what to look for, and then she had a close encounter with Thrifty Kind. Oh. So this really crazy lady, I mean, really crazy, like, wow, this is, like, really in my face. Yeah. <laughs> so this really crazy lady, crazy hair, she came in our space. It was really crazy. So she was listening to Jason talk about scanning, so she was really interested in that part. And then right when we were leaving, because I was like, okay, got it, I got it. I am such a loser on the scanning, which Jason will probably tell you about that. But um, So she turns to me and she goes, you should always have your man check your music. And I, <laughs> oh, what? I'm sorry, and I didn't have a response quick enough. I was just like, oh, okay. And then I just kind of ran up to Jason and was like, oh, my gosh, I just had my, you know, first thing. So, yeah, so it was kind of, it was funny. So we had a good giggle, and then, yeah, it was crazy. So I'm her man, and I'm picking her music, I guess. Oh. <laughs> According to that lady in Savers, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, so that's our, our thrifty encounter. <laughs> uh, so mine is, actually, it has to do with you, Jason. And... Um, when when we were thrifting in New York City, do you remember when it's your actually your thrifty encounter? I think it was a thrifty encounter for you. I'm gonna embarrass myself a little. <laughs> so I was in line in front of you and I had all this stuff in my arms and I happened to drop and break a Starbucks mug that shattered all over the floor. So if you want to take it from there, I don't know. You can just embarrass me. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, look, if you watch a show for any given amount of time, you know Nadine drops things, breaks things, knock things over. That's why she's drinking out of a sippy cup. Yeah, this so unfortunate time, she went to pick up her mess and sliced her finger open. And I heard the breakage. I didn't mm -hmm. realize she cut herself. And also, I see, like, this trail of blood. Yes, it was very embarrassing for me, but... You cleaned it up for you helped me out because you gave it to the employee and you said uh, there's a broken item here and it might have some blood on it. <laughs> she, yes. she doesn't want to take it from me. I go, look, I've already touched the blood. You don't need to touch it. Let me just give me the trash can. I'll throw it away for you. <laughs> it was really, it was horrible. It was so embarrassing. So then you give me your do rag. With oh little, yeah. <laughs> yes. Because I had nothing, finger. I had nothing in my purse to like, you know, to to help my my wounded finger. Right here. <laughs> yeah, so, so I had to wash it and send it back in the mail. And how did I send it? Uh, you sent it with a gift. I sent it FOMO. Yeah, but you, you, sent, something, you sent some, something else with it. I sent it. a Spice Girls mug with it, yeah. Yeah, Spice Girls, there it is. <laughs> but that was really your thrifty encounter, because I think it was a more of a thrifty encounter for you to be yep. behind me in line and actually know me. I felt like a parent cleaning up my kid's mess. <laughs> yes, it was so <laughs> horrible. But... Yeah, that was fun. All right, so now we've done that, and now it's time for the Thrifty Tips of the Week. And uh, one of our special guests, Robin, plays a part in my Thrifty uh, Tip, too, because what I found, which I thought was super cool, was this pot. And what was even cooler was, in the pot, was the booklet for it. So I shared it in the group, and I said, hey, is this worth anything? Because I didn't know what to look up uh, in terms of what this was called, the uh, the pattern. And at the moment, we didn't realize this went with it, even though it was inside of it, because the bottom wasn't with it. And somebody said, oh, that's a slow cooker. It's missing the bottom heat element. And by the time someone said that, we were way over in clothes. And I said, hey, Robin, do me a favor. Go back, see if you can find that heating element, because I was setting up my little periscope. And boom, she found the heating element. So... If you've got something that's supposed to have another part, search the section. So this was in pots and pans, and this was in uh, small kitchen appliances. And there you go. Boom. I got the full deal with the booklet. So 10 bucks. That was my purchase. So it helps to have A, a friend, and B, a thought. <laughs> and, see a, and see a Facebook group to tell you to go find the missing piece. <laughs> and you are up. 
Okay, so my thrifty tip is to make sure that when you're buying either uh, embroidery or uh, needlework kits or sewing patterns to make sure if, if it's obviously sewing patterns the envelope is always you're always able to open that so you always make, make sure that the that the actual pattern is uncut but also make sure the instructions are there and the same thing with needlepoint kits and and uh, and embroidery kits things like that because um, sometimes if they're opened, the, if the instructions or there's actually a, a, gra a chart that, that, um, that kind of maps out the needlepoint um, for you. So if those are missing, it's really hard to actually complete it. So make sure that they're in there. I sold a needlepoint kit a while ago. I think it was a cross-stitch kit actually. And it was open. I checked for everything and I didn't realize that the chart was missing. So the buyer messaged me and said, there's no chart in here. I can't complete it. So I actually ended up buying another same kit just so that I could send her a chart because it was a really, it was kind of a rare kit. So you know, you do what you can for your buyer, but always make sure that those instructions and charts are in there. Yep, and on certain things like my crock pot, when the instructions are in there, it'll add some value to it exactly. too. Exactly. Yes. You know, now now somebody's not gonna go dig out a 1972 crock pot uh, instruction manual. I got it for you. Yep. All righty, now it is time For you have got to be shipping me, where we t give you shipping tips, usually nays uh, what to do, I'm not what to do. So I'm kind of not what to do, but it's uh, before our friend Pam. Pam has been on the show, oh, Pam who's yes. with us. Yeah. Pam had a little, uh, she was missing something today she needed, and she was sick, and there was no way around it. She had to go get it. So you need to, when, when we're done with the show, don't do it now. Do not do it now. When we're done with the show, go to USPS.com and order these. And if you... You, you know, do not know what oh, these are? Oh, yes. That's a good tip. These are windows for when you ship Priority International. So anything over four pounds, you need this. Because if it's under four pounds, it's going to print off on a regular one-sheet label. You're all good to go. Hey, Noisy, I'm going to mute you for a second. Sorry about that. I'm trying to dig out my... All right. Over four pounds, it's going to be two sheets of paper, no labels. You're going to cut them in half. And then there's going to be four sections. One's for you. The other three go in here. They all need to be signed and dated. So make sure you have these. Pam, unfortunately, didn't have one. Had to drag her butt to the post office. And the post office wouldn't even give her extras. They gave her one extra. She asked, and she's like, well, we can give you one. I'm like, bitch, give me more than one. <laughs> so she ordered some today. But, yes, if you don't have these, get them. You're going to need it. Even if you're just starting and you're going to ship international, there's going to be some point when somebody wants to upgrade or you're going to have a more than a four-pound item. So make sure you order them. They're the only plastic windows on USPS, so you don't even need to know what it's called. Just find the plastic windows. Oh. All right. You don't so need to know. Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to dig out my shipping tip item. I know. <laughs> sorry about that. So, Pam, I just want to say I hope you feel better soon. I'm sorry that you're not feeling well. I love you. Hugs. And that happened to me once, actually, with that, um, with that thing, that international what it's called, <laughs> the plastic thingy. Uh, so my tip is that you should always include a, well, it's my belief, some, some sellers don't include packing slips, um, but it's my belief that you should because if the package ever gets lost in transit, there's, or the label gets gets damaged, there's a way for the post office to track the package and get it back to you. And that did happen to me once. It came back in a clear Ziploc bag. And it was, <laughs> yes, and it just said, sorry, it got damaged, that kind of thing. And it was just the item and the packing slip. So obviously they had gone inside, the label got damaged, and they found the address inside, and they were able to ship it back to me. And I also include a... I include I, I have these little inserts with my store information. Oh, look how pretty. So, yeah, so I also include a little Did you happen to be a graphic design artist? I just happen <laughs> to be. So <laughs> I don't ever ask for feedback, but I just say my what I say in my in my uh little thing is please contact us through eBay message if any concerns or questions arise. Your positive experience and complete satisfaction with your purchase are very important. So I don't you know, ask for feedback, but I just kind of, you know, 
and it and it usually works. You know that people are very uh, responsive to that. So. Cool. Good job. All right. Now it is time for. Dang, you think I ought to be ready while you're chit chatting? <laughs> I'm a little slow on that one there. Time for the viewers two minute topic of the week. And since I picked it this week, I know the question. Unlike last week when I was very surprised to read a whole different question. <laughs> This week, it is from Sarah Godfrey. Thank you, Sarah, for writing in. I believe in patience and waiting for the right buyer, but sometimes you just have to throw in the towel. How do you know when it's finally time to unlist an item or donate it and put it in a yard sale? And this is something we talk about quite often, actually, and I kind of deal with it on a daily basis where things I'm like, eh. So it's a good topic, and let me get the timer ready for Nadine. All right, you ready, Nay? Mm -hmm. And you're off. So I look for items that have been listed for a very long time. Obviously, I have some items like those that Secura mug that was a dud that I just I just uh, talked about that have been in my store for probably over a year. The longest item was I think since I had my store I opened it in 2011. So obviously if you have items that are listed that long, there's something wrong. You need to revise your listing, go through them. And you know, see if, if your market price is wrong, like my like my needlepoint kit, and you know, because everything fluctuates. So just just kind of look at your listings, review them, and if they've been up that long, question yourself: Is there something wrong? Are there so many listed that it's you know that it's is it just not an undesir it's a non desirable item? And at that point, I will consider redonating and just throwing in the towel for my item. So. And I am at. Uh, nice. Last week you were going strong. You're like, I'm I going. Oh, I, I this, yeah. I'm going two minutes. Hey, shh. <laughs> Jeez, you guys just can't be quiet for one hour, can you? <laughs> it's always you. I know. This is twice now. <laughs> I, audience gives one instruction: clap, cheer, but be quiet. All right, I'm actually bringing up a real quick. Um, I have a, I'll have a uh, visual example for mine, so let me bring that up real quick. And uh, I don't usually do visual examples with this, but it's a very timely, uh, very timely thing that I just sold this. So here, let me bring that up, and let me start my timer. And here we go. Okay, so as Nay said, if you uh, have old listings, I've had this listed for two years, and I finally noticed it had been listing for listed for two years. So I'm like, okay, it's still not a dud. Jam's World's a good dress. Maybe this pattern just isn't right. And the word pastel was not in the original title, so I thought, nah, I'll throw pastel in there. I'll bring it much down to a lower price. And I had it on sale, and it sold for 20 bucks within three days of a fresh listing with one fresh word and a better price. So instead wow. of going straight to donating, I, I tweaked it just a smidge. One word, a fresh listing, a new price, and it sold rather quickly. So... Uh, I was very happy with that, and I, I leave my stuff up for a good year and a half before I do anything, and uh, once they realize they're not going so well, I'll, I'll do that, or sometimes like CDs, I'll move it from eBay to Amazon, Amazon to eBay, and then there's some point where somebody goes, hey, I'll give you $7 for that crappy Jimmy Buffett shirt, and I'm like, right. sure, you can have it, because <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Boom, drop the mic right on the minute. Woo! But hang in there. I see people take, uh, I know it's supposed to be 60 seconds. I see people get too freaked out. It's been listed for a week and a half. I have no views. Oh, Relax. No, no, no. You have to I mean, when it's listed for years, and you know, then you know something, something's up with it. So. Yeah, as uh, Stacy said, talk about it. If you talk about an item or touch it, it usually sells. It's a weird phenomenon. True. A weird phenomenon. Girlfriend, I'm going to put you in the hallway. <laughs> Is it impossible? <laughs> Debbie Weeder is no longer allowed to be in the studio audience. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. What have I done, Nadine? What if I rescue me? <laughs> All right. And time, we do, uh, we do one segment every four weeks, and this time it is time for the Lifesavers Merit Badge. And what the Lifesavers Merit Badge is, well, I let Nadine explain it. It was her idea. I totally like this idea. Okay. 
It is. We have our group is a thrifting board. So if you're not already a member, come on over and ask to join, and we'll let you in. And it is basically we, the life the lifeguards go and they go through, and we just we just pick a thread of of you know of the the week or the last couple of weeks that we really think stands out and was a positive thread. It doesn't necessarily mean that the original post was you know a standout question, but what happens after the post is posted and how the group interacts with with the post and what happens from you know from there is really what we look at. So we have uh, I think yep, so we have an example. I'll, yes. I'll talk about it for a sec. Oops, I gotta share the screen. Duh. Yeah. So, so it is, this was a good one. I'm so glad this one got picked. So Sydney Morgan Austin asks, I have a question. Is this group only for sellers who sell on eBay, Etsy, and Amazon? Simple question. You yeah, know. And, and a good question, especially if you're mm -hmm. new, because we do talk about, obviously, eBay a ton, mm -hmm. uh, Amazon a fair bit, and Etsy, you know, time to time. Uh, but Bridget, who's another one of our lifeguards, like Nadine, mm -hmm. said, or other venues, you know, it's wherever, and someone brings up uh, Poshmark. And Poshmark, Poshmark is a new way to sell. And the funny thing is, Nay, I... Someone mentioned it a long time ago, and I, I downloaded the app and registered, and then I, I kept getting, uh, like, you know, bills following your closet on Poshmark, and I was like, I always yeah. forgot, I, what is this app? Like, why are people in my closet? I couldn't remember. So it's for girly stuff, like I sell. It's, it's actually right up my niche, and I didn't really... I wasn't really aware of it, so it's it's a whole new thing for me. So I would like to explore it more. And Sydney, who was the original poster, she actually she was so nice in the thread. She offered all kinds of information. She had a discount, uh, a Poshmark discount that she extended to, to offer to people, and she was really nice and explained, took the time to explain what Poshmark was and was you know, just very helpful to our other group members. And the one thing I want to point out on the screen share here is, you know, if you haven't read this post, maybe you just flew on by it. If you sell women's clothes, you should check this out. I think it's a new thing. I'm definitely going to, now that I remember what it's for and somebody isn't just peeking in my closet, mm -hmm. uh, I'm definitely going to uh, get on it. But one thing I want to point out, if you look at the picture here on the right, so this, this side here, uh, look at all the replies below some of these posts. So, don't just read on the surface. Make sure you realize that 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 uh, reply from Bridget has then another 27 replies, and then Dana Lux has another 29 replies. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of good information, but make sure you expand it all so you can read it. And I hadn't really fully read the whole thing until we decided to do this post, and I read it, and I'm like, I want to start selling on Poshmark right now. Yeah. So thank you to Sydney. She really was helpful and just a great example of what we love in our group because we love new information and people that are willing to share and help others. That's really great. So go Sydney! I think we have two right now on the. There we go. <laughs> Yes. Cat nap corner. Which cat is on Nay's steps? Could it be Milo? Hmm, Phoebe too. could be. Is it my boy Half Point? He's under my desk napping right now. All right. I, I only see him. I only see a Milo sound asleep. There's Phoebe. If you look up there, you can see Phoebe. Oh, oh well, Phoebe's so dark. Yes. Yeah, too bad. Pre show, Milo was just going to town on himself, too. Dang. He I is. Yeah, he's, my, that's okay, my Milo. Yeah, he's... Milo is well groomed right now. Milo's a clean, yes. clean kitty. <laughs> All right, before we get our guests in here, one thing I want to share with you: we have, uh, we we finally have up a new T-shirt, so a non-Christmas T-shirt, and this is Debbie Weeder's shirt that she got in the mail, uh, and it is uh, being thrifty is our business. Now you can now you can share it, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, if you look down below in the uh, description for this episode, I do have the link there. The link is on our Thrifty Business with JNA fan page. It's in the thrifting board, and uh, it comes in five colors. And these are lighter colors because we went with a little darker uh, theme. But we will have another uh, setup with uh, uh, dark shirts and a lighter setup. Okay, understand? But right now we got like light blue, light yellow, a couple grays, and a light green. 
So go buy a shirt. You know, we do. Uh, we work hard on the show to give you guys some good information and some fun. And uh, this is the way we can make a little couple extra bucks, and they and I split the profits on that. Thanks, everybody. Oh, my mom got hers and dad's today. Oh, we need Aww. a picture of you guys wearing it. Aww, That's what we need. You. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we should do a contest. Like, you know, we're, we're, take a picture of yourself out thrifting wearing it, and we'll do something. So put your thinking caps on, everyone. Let's do a contest. All right, let's get our guests in here. So let me share the screen so I can flip our chairs around here. So uh, guess what, Nay? You're going to vamp for 60 seconds. Okay, so we have Amy coming up, and... She is a new seller on eBay, and she's been, I don't remember, I think she's been selling eight months. She sells on Amazon as well, and uh, she's going to be talking about being a new seller, and she also has an interesting day job, which uh, she'll talk about a little bit, and uh, so All right. Amy's going to take it. Hey, who's here? It's Amy. Live in the studio. Hi, Yay! Hi, Amy. All right, so make sure, uh, can everyone hear Amy good? So as soon as it catches up, I want to make sure. I think we're as good enough, but uh, this is the first time I've done a guest where the mic was over here. So there we are. We are waving. I'm, we're watching ourselves now. Hi. Hi, Jason and Amy. <laughs> Say something, Amy, make sure everybody can hear you. Can everyone hear me okay? I miss Joy. What is her day job? Don't jump ahead, Lisa. Oh. We'll get there. We'll get there. We will get there. I guess everyone can hear Amy okay? Yes, I can hear Pug Foster Great. Mom is the guest? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, not a Pug Foster Mom. <laughs> All right, so here's the one bummer. You know, what do we always do with our guests, Nadine? Um. You share there. Yes. We share their scores and their duds. Well, there is some error with Amy's eBay ID, which might be a real problem, Amy. Oh. You might have to get to that. So I can see her live listings, and when I click on completed or sold, it says this seller does not exist. Um, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, when I click on solds from her ID, it said uh, one or more of these seller IDs you entered was not found. One or more. I only entered one. How many can enter? So we can't do scores and duds today. Too bad. That's okay. We have to talk about other stuff. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> kind of a bummer, though. We'll come back another time and do that. All right. So I'll let, uh, I'll let uh, Nadine kick it off here. All right. Fire away. <laughs> so, Amy, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started uh, selling online and what you like to sell, kind of your niche and all, all of that? So you can just... Okay. Well, I've been selling on... Uh, we started out first with Amazon, and that was back about last April or so. And the reason we started was we have two older daughters, and I was looking for some supplemental income to help cover those college expenses that come in. You know, these kids need to have that pizza fund to be able to go to college with. <laughs> so, And I'd rather have them studying than having to work for that pizza. So um, we started looking, and my husband is really into social media a lot, and he loves getting into Facebook groups and taking different courses, and he mentioned, well, we need to really start looking into Amazon and eBay. So to start out, I did Amazon, and then a couple months later, I started eBay, and the reason I did that is because I'm just a big shopper at heart. I love going for clearance sales. <laughs> I drive my husband crazy because I could take him shopping all day if I see a clearance sign. Uh, and then we got into thrift stores, and I could spend the whole day going through thrift stores too. So I knew there was a way to make some major money with this. So, hence, this is how eBay got started. Um, some of the items I really like to sell, first of all, would be men's clothing is sort of like our forte. I also like to sell men's ties. I go through glassware. But anything that I see that I could make some profit on, of course, we're always willing to make some money. So that's how we got started. So eBay was first, correct? Amazon was I'm sorry, first. Amazon was first. Uh -huh. And um, uh, so are you doing merchant fulfilled or FBA? We do about 85% uh, FBA. Wow. The other would be. And then if you're if you happen to be watching our show, maybe you're new to watching Three Business with J and A. And if you are new, you've got a lot of catching up to do. So get back there. Uh, but uh, Merchant Fulfilled is you list it and you keep it in your office or wherever, and you ship it. 
FBA is when you send it to Amazon and they sell it for you. Now, the advantage of FBA is most Amazon sellers have what's called Amazon Prime. They get free two-day shipping on every product that is in their warehouse. So if Amy sends her stuff in and somebody wants to buy it, it shows up free two days. So I like to do my Merchant Fulfilled, my CDs, because I like to move them back and forth between eBay and Amazon, and I always have such rare ones. It doesn't really matter where I put them because the extra 4 bucks for shipping, nobody cares. When you're buying a $100 CD, you're like, man, what's 4 bucks at that point, you know? Right, yes. So what uh, So what are the main things you're fba What What are you sending into Amazon? Uh, um, anything that I can find, I can make a profit on. I do a lot of retail arbitrage. Uh, Christmas, Black Friday was like the biggest shopping day for us. We went crazy on Black Friday. Uh, the manager at Toys R Us loved to see us coming because we'd take cartfuls of <laughs> stuff out of there. She became like my best friend. Um, and I know a lot of people say, you know, people don't like to see uh, Amazon sellers come into their stores and things. But I find if you build relationships with those managers, you're friendly to them, you joke around with them a little bit, have a bubbly personality, it tends to help. She would even help me wheel the stuff out to my car. That's and a good I manager. I filled my little Honda Civic so bad one day we had to tie the trunk shut. Because you so wait, 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 wait! You do this in a Honda Civic? I do. I do. Uh, all right, hang I'm on, sorry. hang on. Let's pull the thrifters in this audience. Uh, Robin, what do you drive? Um, uh, Aspen. Chrysler Aspen. So SUV, right? Yes. yes. Debbie, yes. what do you drive? A Camry. Camry. Okay. I have an SUV, and uh, I'm sorry, Civic. Well, the smart cars no, were all taken. My husband owns the Suburban, but he travels out of good state. Good man. Good man. So that's the reason Amy's with the Honda. So. He takes the big vehicle to travel. I mean, what happens if you get someplace and there's like 100 things you need and your your car holds 40 of them? What do you do? I filled my dashboard. I, have, I, have, I am not joking. Where's those pictures? I am not joking. I took pictures way back a few years ago. Well, a couple months ago, actually, when I did that and showed pictures of how bad it got. So, yeah. So, <laughs> yes. And I drive a Nissan Pathfinder, so I have the SUV too, but I have tape, so. Yeah. See, I'm always I'm always afraid I'm gonna find that like dining room set like I can't pass up the deal. So I always have to have an SUV. Now I've never bought a dining room set, but the day I get rid of my SUV, that's the day I find a dining room set. That's right. <laughs> well, I got mine because I couldn't fit three car seats in a row at the time, and now we have two boosters in a car seat. But I had a, I had to have a vehicle with a third row seating. But now it comes in handy because I flip the third row down and I have all that room for my thrifting find. So. And it's funny, I never thought that would turn into the whole discussion in the chat right now is <laughs> <laughs> who drives what? And, and let me tell you, this, there seems to be no middle. It's either tiny car or giant car. Like, no one has a middle. Like, I would say Deb's car is a middle. Yeah. I went from a Nissan Versa to a Rogue to a Pathfinder. So. That, is, that is crazy. <laughs> All right, so you're, uh, you're, you're sending stuff in, you're FBA in. And then you hop over, like, I'm going to give this eBay thing a whirl. I decided I need to first, I don't like to be, like, going into something blind. So I need to study up on this. I need to learn as much as I can about this before I jump in head first, not knowing what I'm doing. So my husband being the Internet guru that he is, he's like, well, I've pulled up this whole bunch of YouTube videos. Here's some courses you can look at. Here's some other people who have different programs you can take if you want to do that. So... Just have at it and go to it. And so I started by first finding Jay online and then, of course, finding <laughs> the show. Uh, I pulled up videos, um, Jim Cochran's uh, programs that he has. I went through all of that. And um, I have just listened to different people. And, um, you know, as you keep listening, you learn things. And I started out with a little three ring binder and I went to thrifting board and I printed from your file pages all those bolo lists nice. that you guys put out there and I put little tabs so I have a tab for men's clothing, a tab for women's clothing, men's shoes, women's shoes and I go through everything. So then as I sit here listening to you guys if I hear a new brand come up, I go and I add it to my list, and then I carry my little binder into the store with me, and I go through, and I say, oh, is that a brand that I should be buying? Now, you know, you, you can put lists on your iPad or your iPhone, I you know. I know that, but the problem This is, is much easier to carry, by the way. The problem is the store I'm at, they don't have good cell phone okay. signal. Okay, all right, that's then that's a good answer. Coming. And that's where yep. later right. on 
I have a problem like with an item I really got burned on because I wasn't able to check a price and, and yeah, I'm selling it real low. <laughs> we, we tried a Periscope yesterday from the one store that has crappy reception. It's terrible. And uh, when you watch the replay now, Periscope cuts out all the bad parts, so it's just like we're like. <laughs> <laughs> so I I get it. So that I get it. And it's good to hear that our files are useful to people. So thank you for for commenting on that. Yeah, yeah. So the lifeguards have worked hard on those files, so thank you. I love them. And I have to give a shout out to all the girls that I met up at Ecom Chicago last October. Miss Joy, Christine, all you ladies up there. We all went out to dinner. Um, they were the greatest group. We sat down. We talked about so many things. And if people get a chance to go to that event, I think it's a fabulous way to network, first of all. Learn about your little eBay and Amazon families and what supports you have when you have questions. Who can I go to to get help on um, certain things? Who has a strength maybe in this category that could help me because I'm sort of weak in that area? It really helps. Mm -hmm. so shout out to our, our, our Chicago group. I yep. love all of them, and I will be there in October. I'm excited. I've never been there much, except for the airport. So. All right, Nay, ask the question everyone's waiting to hear. <laughs> so what is your day job, Amy? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here it comes. Is everybody ready? Make, make, sure, you're, make sure you're seated because this is – wait, 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 wait. I, I never usually do this, but before we get to it, hey, hey group, uh, hey, chatters, what do you think her day job is? It's, oh, yeah. It's, and you guys that already know cannot yes, answer. Yes, please, if you know, don't answer because if you know, you know. But yeah, guesses. Who those who don't know, let's get some guesses. And her day job has nothing remotely at all to do with her nighttime job. So, <laughs> um, uh, and while we're doing that, let's see what uh, what our guesses are. No, yeah, day job. What is the day job? Rock star. Well, are you a rock star? Mortician. I like that guess. <laughs> stay at home. Mom. Sex oh. Stay at home. Mom. Mortician again. <laughs> Pot seller, exotic dancer, trucker, chicken. Oh my gosh. Chicken plucker. <laughs> Crime scene cleanup, sales clerk, auctioneer. I mean, oh these are goodness. great. You guys, I'm so glad I asked. <laughs> mortician twice. That blows my mind that two people said mortician. I had too much CSI. Lawyer, teacher. <laughs> All right. Um, some of you are some of you are close. So now, now you can answer. Okay. So Booty shaker. Yes, that's it. Yes. And now she will demonstrate. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I have a full-time job, and I am actually the call center manager for the world's largest retailer of adult novelty toys, triple X movies, and lingerie items. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm bilingual in Spanish, so I get to handle all those escalated calls that are in English and Spanish, and then they also throw Portuguese at me. Even though I don't speak Portuguese, I think I should be able to, so we get all those calls, too. And so tonight's show, we're going to redo it, uh, this the same show for an hour, and she's going to do it in Spanish for us. <laughs> yes. And I probably could. But all right, <laughs> give, give us a little something, like... Uh, um, Buenas noches, ustedes. Muchas gracias para venir a este programa de nosotros y estamos muy contentos que ustedes están aquí con nosotros para ver nuestro programa. Muy bueno. You know what she just said, Nadine? I should. I, she I, she I, said Nadine's no. awesome and Jason's a piece of shit. That's what she said. No, I don't think that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, and I can understand some Spanish. I took one year of it, but the French and the Spanish were so similar that I'd be speaking French and Spanish, and you know, first vice. Yeah, yeah it was. Right. It got a little confusing, but I, I am. Uh, I, uh, I speak French as my second language. About is my hubby happy with my job? <laughs> Let me tell you, the last thing I want to do is come <laughs> home and talk about these products when you deal with them for forty hours a week. But what I do get to come home and tell him is some of the weird, crazy phone calls that we get in that call center. I'm That's sure. That's sort of funny. Yeah. <laughs> like the one I asked you about the other day? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we can say that. No, today. but, well, I could. It's my show. I don't give a shit. Uh, oh but. <laughs> I, I care. <laughs> but above and beyond yes. who she works for yes. and what she does you know, she runs the call center, so customer service is her yes. daytime job. So yes. let's let's ignore what she sells because it could be anything. And so, 
dealing with those people on a daily basis, you know, one to one talking in multiple languages, how does that translate to make you a better online seller? Well, I can tell you, um, the number one thing you need to do is make sure you're always making that customer happy. I know sometimes we'll all talk together about how we had this just terrible, terrible customer and you just want them to go away, leave you alone. But it's really important that you take care of that customer and try to find a compromise with them because one bad customer will go and tell 20 different people about that bad experience that they had with you on that one item and you really don't know what the long-term effect could be of when that one negative experience gets out there to the public. And especially with social media these days, people can just blast you in so many different forums about, well, this happened or that happened, and you really don't even know it's out there. So, <laughs> so uh, I, I, I want to expand that in a second, but I, I don't want to miss this. Somebody wants to know if you ever dumpster dive out back at work. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I really have to say, our company is very, very professional, uh, the way that we handle things. Uh, returns are automatically incinerated. They are not even touched. Uh, we even have a security company that comes in to take care of that. Um, anything you buy from our company, it's very well taken care of. Nothing is of any bad nature or anything's happened to it, you know, so you don't ever have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and I agree. I mean, it, it is always about the customer and I don't care. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it's been a rare occasion for me and, and maybe you and, and I know Nadine that it's a rare occasion to have a customer that is so wrong and out, been out of shape because they're wrong that you don't just deal with it. It's so much easier mm -hmm. because more people, you know, I call businesses when I've had a great experience and I talk to a manager because I say, I know you get the, mm -hmm. the, the, you guys suck calls all the time. You never get the, hey, good job calls. You never. That's right. And so I like to, when I, when something above and beyond happens to me, because it is very much human nature to go to 23 Facebook groups and go, this seller sucks, block them, or this buyer sucks, block them. And so I, your day job, I'm definitely, I'm sure keeps you grounded in the fact that. Absolutely. You got to keep it uh, happy because a happy customer is a uh, repeat customer. Oh yeah, I'll go above and beyond. And at the end of the day, just make them happy. It's just it's it's worth it. It's not worth the hassle to go through the should I refund or shouldn't I and all that. Just just make them happy. Uh, all right, Milo is going to town. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't. Get your shoulder, Milo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm so bummed that we cannot show your scores and does. I mean, yeah. uh, well, let me ask you this. I'm going to share this. You mind if I share? Go ahead. I want to ask you about something in your store. Mm -hmm. Is this Beanie Baby really worth $200? Okay, so there is a special type of Beanie Baby that is made with a special type of pellet inside of the Beanie Baby. And if you mm -hmm. find this Beanie Baby that has that specific pellet, this is what's making it such a rare item. Now, there is another one that has a different type of pellet, and it's not really worth anything but maybe 8 to $10. But this is the reason why this one is worth so much money is because the pellets are in the Beanie Baby. Are the pellets made out of 24-karat gold? Or? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really would think so, right? Um, but, again, it was something that uh, I had to do some research on. I went online and there was somebody talking about Beanie Babies on one of something I found on Google or on YouTube and I tried to find the value on this bear and I think we paid 49 cents for it. My husband found it and when he looked at it, oh my gosh, I got so excited in the store. I was like, oh, grab it before someone else takes it and let's cash out before it goes and disappears on us. But the reason why um, is because of these specific pellets. So we've been trying to uh, put it out there and see, but it hasn't been on too long, so we'll see if it goes. Good luck. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I, to sell a $200 Beanie Baby in 2016, yeah. yes. I will bow to you yeah. if yeah, that's yes. the case because yes. the Beanie Babies are worth uh, their yeah. packing material. That's what they're yes. worth. Yes, it has. As I said, the certain type of pellets that are in there. Hey, Nate, can you turn your camera a smidge and we'll see what, where Milo's at now? Oh, okay. We'll I think Milo's there called. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Milo has yeah, called me. He's... he's going to town. There you go. Oh, he stopped. What the heck? Oh, he felt this. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he's, he's enjoying himself there. Aaron. Stop. <laughs> Any other questions for Amy? 
Oh, so you sell on, on, on both platforms. What is your, do you have a preference of, of the two platforms? Well, Amazon I tend to make more money on, of course, mm -hmm. than I do on eBay, but I just have more fun on eBay than on Amazon. I think um, one of the things with Amazon, I mean, with all the rules and things, everyone's always worried about one day I might get that dreaded suspension email if I do this wrong, if I do that wrong. You're like walking on eggshells all the time. Uh, and I don't like to have that feeling, but uh, it is very um, prosperous, of course, and it is the way that a lot of things have been moving towards. But eBay for me, I just love the thrill of going out and finding that golden nugget that's hidden out there in that thrift store and uh, just researching it and looking at the history oh, of yeah. items. So much fun, yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and I do have to say, it, it has been sort of handy um, because, you know, I had like a major car repair that came up that I was not expecting a couple months ago. And I'm like, oh my gosh, where am I going to get the money to fix this? And I'm like, oh, you know what? I just had some pretty good sales here on eBay. I could go over and just take some of the funds out of the eBay account, and there we go. We were all set to get, fix the car. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's been great for me to uh, when you get you know you know with my medical issues with with going through cancer and all. I I can't you know I don't I can't work at my full time job. So it's been it's been great to have that income still from from my sales. So. All right, so I got one more question for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I've ever shown, but everyone's heard about my two 10 by 10 storage units full. We've seen Robin's storage units. <laughs> Do you have them? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I did a major shopping haul with my husband, and we took the Suburban, not the Honda Civic. I'm not sure, okay. <laughs> Uh, and we came back and we loaded my house. There was only a small path through my living room and kitchen to get to the bedroom, and that was about all we had left because it got so bad. So my husband said, okay, that's it. I'm calling today. We are getting one of the storage, you know, the shipping pods. Um, Whoa, so it's getting real now, shipping yeah. pod. He called and said, how oh. fast can you drop one in my yard? So... They is had it, one there the next day, believe it or not. It was that quick. It's like the Uber of shipping pods. Yes. Like <laughs> What size is it, Dave? It's a 20-foot pod. 20-foot pod we have. 20-foot um, by what? 20 by 10. 20 by okay, 10. Okay. 20 by 10 pod. And I've actually set up my eBay store inside of this pod. So when you walk in... Oh, where's those pictures? <laughs> oh, man. So, see, I wasn't expecting to come to this. So I have nothing really prepared. Oh. But, um, Amy Part 2. Amy Part 2. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Live from her pod. I like that. Live from my pod. Um, but, does yeah, your pod have Wi-Fi? It doesn't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but when you walk in, it's pretty neat because everything is organized. And I have a way, um, like for my clothing, it all hangs on racks. And I bought uh, my husband. Oh, you, you, you're you, jumping ahead. Wait, hang on a second. <laughs> hang on. So we have our guests. Amy's bonus tip of the week that she's going to give us here. Oh, let's get the graphic and the sound in. You were, okay. you were just like, I'm just, I'm just going right ahead. Right ahead. <laughs> bonus tip of the week. Here All we go. Right. So, bonus tip of the week. What I do, um, because I have to keep things organized, especially now I'm traveling and I have my 18-year-old trying to handle my shipments and find things to get them out in a timely manner to my customers. So when you walk into my pod, everything is organized. And the first thing you're going to see is on the left, I have like two bins. That's all new items that have not been listed and that are ready to be listed. Then after that, we have plastic racks that have um, plastic bins in there for small items like caps, hats, accessories, maybe little toys, HBA items. And then it goes on and we have one that has DVDs, CDs, uh, books, and vice versa, shoes. Uh, board games, uh, then we have big bins of plush toys, and then I have my clothing racks on the other side of the pod. And what we found is, my husband came up with an idea, he ordered from Amazon the little coat check tags. So what I do is when I do a listing, I'll put my item number and I pull a coat check tag and I hang it on the hanger. So it'll say like item number P36. So I know that it is the pink coat check tag number 36. So I'll go to my pink rack of clothes, pull that item, and it's very easy to find. Then as I start walking out the door, right there is my rack, and it has all my shipping supplies. So I grab my poly bag, my bubble, whatever I need, 
and out the door I go. So to pull my item now, we got it down to probably about two to three minutes max. Yay, day! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real quick before we uh, finish up. Now, some people say that Tom L. says he can see your completed. But Lisa can't, I can't, so, Strange. yeah, you yeah. should probably look into that when you get home. Okay. If you still okay. can't, there might be a problem with your okay. ID. Okay. Uh, but there's two questions, and you, you don't have to answer either one if you don't want to. Okay. Uh, do you have an HOA who are pissed because you have a pot out front? I think you guys live in the country, don't no, you? we live way out in the sticks. In fact, you have to drive 10 miles and then drive 10 miles more to find us. <laughs> um, and to tell you the truth, it's sort of funny because our neighbors will come over and want to shop my eBay store. So I open the door. There you go. And here you go, guys. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we need to have a follow-up from the pod. That is... <laughs> and uh, uh, you guys live in North Carolina? We live in North Carolina. We're um, north of Raleigh-Durham area, actually, close to the Virginia border. So we go in and out of Virginia pretty easily, too. <laughs> and, uh, and you don't have to answer if you don't want. Mm -hmm. Cost of the pod a month? Dave, how much does our pod cost? Um, they delivered it. You had to pay a deposit, one month ahead deposit, and it's ninety nine dollars a month. Well, that's cheaper than my storage units. Can you guys hear that? Ninety nine. Is it? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's ninety nine dollars a month. Yeah. Uh, let's go get a pod. We're, we're, yeah, we will our HOA allow it? Allow it? <laughs> I don't think I can. I can fit one here in Philly. Um, <laughs> I, it just made more yeah. sense. We didn't have to drive to the storage unit every couple. Of days. Uh, yeah. Look, if you're in the country, yeah. you can get it for ninety nine bucks a month. There it is. And it's right there. Um, yeah, he's really talking about this storage unit. We really looked into that. My closest storage unit facility is about 15 to 20 minutes away. Right. And I, I work, honestly, guys, I work from 8 a.m. until 11.30 p.m. or midnight every single day. And then on weekends is when I do all my shopping and listing. So I'm going all the time. I don't have time to go back and forth to a storage unit. So with this being here, I can go out to my pod at like 11 o'clock at night. With my nice. <laughs> and we have lights inside too. We have uh, set up lights. <laughs> Running water. There's a wet bar. <laughs> <laughs> um, and hold my items. <laughs> yes. And, but um, and it, another thing too, uh, just to throw this in, it's very important that you have like some support. And my hubby Dave here in the back, you can hear him talking. Oh. He has been my biggest fan and supporter to do this. And he comes up with some coolest ideas because um, he knows I work full time and time efficiency is very important to me to have things orderly and neat so we can move fast to get things processed. And that comes with Amazon shipments too. We've really mainstreamed our efficiency on how we ship things with Amazon to make sure they're in and out the door to turn that profit. Well, you know, I knew we'd talk about a new being a new seller, her day job. I didn't know it was gonna be this awesome. I have a store in my front yard. It was, just, it was a heck of a it was a heck of a left turn. I had no idea. And you know what's sort of funny is that I actually have neighbors that drive up and down the road and they're like, Oh yeah, you're the chick that has the store, the eBay thing at your house. I'm like, Yes, that's me. <laughs> All right, Naya, are we we're gonna wrap it up. You got any last questions or are we just gonna call it right here? I was just wondering, as a new seller, I, I know that I, I kind of know the answer to this, but for other people that might want, you know, to get started on selling on eBay specifically, how did you go from, you know, people are worried about often about their feedback, and so how did you how did you get build up some feedback to start selling? You know, go from the zero feed, the scary zero feedback to to you know having some decent feedback numbers. Okay. Well, of course, again, I have over 10 plus years of working here in customer service. So first and foremost is always customer service. Respond quickly when a customer has an issue and they're not happy with something. The very first thing you always need to do is apologize and say, I am so sorry that happened to you, but what can I do to make you happy? What can I do to resolve this for you? And always work on those problems and get them resolved. And I have customers now that will stay with me forever, I think, because I've done that for them. Another thing is I'm very quick on shipping my items out. As soon as I make a sale, I have that item shipped out within 24 hours, and I really stay on top of that. And even with me being here in Vegas right now, I have my little slave labor, my 18-year-old, <laughs> who uh, always needs gas money and always needs something bought, it seems. So I said, you know, it's like me. I've never had anything given to me for free. You work for what you get, so therefore, she's watching my eBay store, and she's taking pictures for me this weekend of some items. 
Uh, and because I told her, it's important I keep that prestige. I say to a customer, I'm going to have your item out in 24 hours. That's what I'm going to do. And I want to make sure that that customer keeps coming back to me. Too bad uh, Roxy and Atocha and Milo and half my don't have thumbs. <laughs> Yes. Good job. Thumbs up down below. <laughs> Subscribe over here. And another great show. I mean, I, yeah. I am. This one's one of my favorites because it took a left turn to something cool, and I didn't know about you guys. So, yay! Thank you, Amy, <laughs> and everybody in our audience. And yeah, so thank you to our audience. Thank you to our guest. Thank you to all of you who tuned in. We had a nice, huge live audience tonight. So make sure you subscribe down below. Please buy a T-shirt. It's going to look awesome in the thrift store. We will do a fun contest. And um, we don't have our guest yet for next week, but we'll do a haul video soon. And, you know, keep an eye out on my Periscopes. I do a weekly uh, five-minute show called Show Me What You Got. Yeah. So uh, check it out. And I think we're going to get Nate to do one, too. I was thinking about that today. Oh, I'm no, like, I don't know about that. Oh, yes. <laughs> Show me what you got from Philly. <laughs> we'll see. So thank you, everyone. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Have a good night.